Folks, welcome to Level Headed Marketing episode. Uh, myself, Doc Sheldon, Gabriela Sanino. We're hosting a hangout today with somebody who needs very little introduction, Bill Slosky. He is the preeminent authority on uh, Google patent interpretation. And not just Google, he, he also deals with other search engines. But basically, if you're interested in where uh, patents indicate we may or may not be headed, in internet marketing or the SEO world, uh, you've probably seen some stuff already from Bill. He's been my go-to for several years because I just don't have the patience for it. Uh, as an attorney himself, he's he's got the patience for it. He's got the ability to read between the lines. And he also has a, a lot more SEO uh, practice under his belt than uh, I think a lot of people realize. He's not just a patent geek. You know, he's also an SEO and, and very knowledgeable in that area. So, Bill, welcome to Level Headed Marketing. Uh, what we hope to hear from you today is uh, your impressions of where the internet really is. You know, what is it capable of doing today, and what do you think uh, we may be seeing in the future? So, take it away, William. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's a tough question answering what the internet is today because it's a lot of different things to a lot of different people and it's moving in a lot of directions all at the same time as uh, uh, William Gibson said at one point uh, the future is all around us it's just not evenly distributed uh, so uh, we look at things like Google now and, and there have been a number of patents uh, there, there, there's been at least one or two that describe what Google now is. Uh, Apple uh, uh, purchased Siri a few years ago, and it's it's uh, uh, been flashed all over TV screens as a personal assistant helping people out. Google now does that as well, but it relies a lot more upon predictive algorithms. It tries to figure out what information you need when you need it. Uh, and uh, that's one of the directions I see uh, uh, search or the internet heading in, providing us with uh, answers to our informational and situational needs, uh, looking at things like uh, our calendars, uh, our email, uh, and, and the things that we search for on the web. Uh, so Google now will warn you uh, uh, 10 minutes before the Hangout starts that there's a Hangout starting, yeah. right? Uh, it'll uh, notice that you like to look at uh, uh, pages about the local baseball team, and it'll give you information about scores uh, for the team and the schedule and things like that. Uh, it may use location-based services to find out that you like to go to a particular coffee house in the morning and uh, present you with an advertisement for a different nearby coffee house uh, as an alternative. Uh, someplace else you could maybe go. So there's a, a personal assistant uh, element to the uh, web that's growing. That, that can be uh, uh, seen as, as something, a direction that something like Google now is moving in. And interesting thing about uh, applications like Google now that tend to be uh, targeted more towards mobile users is that they seem at least like a proof of concept towards uh, development for something like Google Glass. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Google Glass... Uh, we, we, we can use things like Google now. Uh, uh, Google's published a number of patents that talk about, and they acquired a number of patents that talk about uh, indoor mapping and, and how they can uh, uh, bounce signals off of GPS, which doesn't work well indoors. Uh, inside, and, and, and mathematically use things like uh, uh, the micro microelectronic sensors in your phone, uh, the uh, not just the GPS sensor, but Bluetooth sensors, uh, which which ping signals out every once in a while to uh, see what else is nearby, 
uh, including other people's phones. So Google might know when you're near somebody else who has a phone, uh, when you're in close physical proximity to them. Uh, it, can, it can look at uh, uh, the gyroscope on your phone. Uh, uh, more and more sensors are being built into phones. Uh, the latest uh, uh, Galaxy 4 from Samsung has uh, temperature sensors in it, pressure sensors, uh, and uh, they're actually uh, weather stations mm -hmm. where, 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 where you have lots of devices that can report on aspects of weather. Uh, so instead of having weather stations that are 10 miles, 15 miles apart, you've got them all over the place, which transforms the way that uh, uh, weather might be reported. That's we get down to a lot finer level of granularity. Uh, sensors are being used in uh, traffic estimates, in finding out when there's congestion, in seeing when something's being routed around, uh, whether, whether it's a, a, a protest, a street festival, uh, roads closed for one reason or another, uh, which, which uh, sort of goes into a different aspect of the web. And that's something we saw a lot with uh, when Google had real-time search, which is the web is a, a real-time, real-world monitoring tool. You know, I uh, lived through a, a earthquake here in Virginia that was centered about 60 miles south of me. Uh, and... and I had a can of beans fall off my shelf. That's about the extent of the damages. Uh, but it sounded like somebody was running across my roof. So I got up to uh, go see what was happening outside, and everything started shaking. So I sat back down, and I tweeted, anybody else feeling uh, the ground shaking beneath their feet? My first impulse was share it on social media. Uh, and... Mm -hmm. Just don't, don't mean to interrupt, but just I'm curious, what, what social network did you share that with? I tweeted it. It's, oh, it's, did you? Okay. It's, it's, it's an <laughs> ideal network for that type of message. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so the web is a uh, uh, real-time monitoring device. You, you go do a search. When Google had real-time uh, search, you, you could find out what was going on in different places in the world faster than you can learn uh, on the news. And, you know, the, the newspaper gets less and less satisfying every day because I start reading it and it feels like it's yesterday's news. Because I, I learned about it yesterday. Yeah, that's, that's funny because I, you know, I have always signed up for an awful lot of uh, email uh, news bulletins. And so often I find that I'm getting things, you know, hot off the press this morning that we were discussing yesterday morning, yesterday midday, on, on Twitter and Facebook and even in Peeper's, uh, Peep's uh, paper LI that I received, you know, taking me to two or three online posts about the topic, and yet <laughs> CNN is, is trying to scoop everybody with it 20 hours later. You know? <laughs> and I think, you know, that's an important point. You know, Twitter, and, and we saw this in, 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 in several of the Middle East uh, upheavals. Twitter is really the real-time social media platform. It's the one area in which it is, it is really real-time and you can see what's happening. Uh, it may be somebody's video they've uploaded from their smartphone. It may just be a comment, but it's not like Facebook where if you happen to wander over there you may find something on it. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're following Twitter, bam! You know, it, it could be seconds after it happens. So you going on there and say, Did anybody else feel that quake? You know, you may have been, you may have just been literally seconds after the uh, the geodesic report. You know? Right. A uh, couple years back, and I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but a couple years back, the BBC uh, included within sidebar, send us your news, send us your videos, send us your pictures. You know something that's happening that we're not aware of let us know. Uh, and I thought that was really, really bright that they wanted in on that conversation. 
uh, and that they were distributing reporting. Uh, well, I mean, it, it makes business sense. Think about it. Uh, you don't have journalists in every parts of the world in every pocket, mm -hmm. so why not tap into you know social, if you will, the world because they're willing. Uh, whether it's uh, ego, whether it's because they're concerned citizens uh, or whatever, it's 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 a it's an amazing way to to actually connect and communicate with the community which boils down to what everybody's trying to do is build a community. Right, and I'm wondering whether or not Jeff uh, Bezos is, is going to bring that uh, awareness or, or sensibility to the Washington Post. I live about 50 miles west of Washington, D.C., so whether I like it or not, uh, the Washington Post is the uh, only local paper that covers a broad range of topics. The uh, community papers around me only cover uh, the counties they're in. So if I relied upon them, I'd know very little about the world. But the Washington Post has a pull-out section called Metro, which really only covers the cities and areas that are uh, uh, connected to uh, the subway around the city. And, and they really, I'm just outside of that. So they don't report on my county. So uh, we don't have a whole lot of newsworthy things going on in my county, but we have enough to keep a, a, a local paper publishing a couple times a week. Uh, so I'm interested in seeing if he uh, uh, starts personalizing the paper a little bit more than it is. If there ends up being like a Virginia edition of that pullout or a, a Maryland edition, I, I'd like to see it. Uh, have, have any of those discussions happened? Because since he's bought it, I haven't heard or read any news of uh, direction or, or what's happening with that. Just that he bought it and he bought it at 1% of what it was worth and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But uh, no, no real uh, uh, outlook. Uh, as, as, where, as, where they're going. as far as I've seen, those discussions haven't taken place yet. Yeah, and it's business as usual, which right. means when when they include a, a insert in the uh, post uh, that's local, uh, it's not. Most of the stories are generic uh, type stories about how to help your garden grow better or things like that, and there may be uh, one or two or three things that uh, do focus upon somewhere in Virginia, uh, somewhere that tends to be closer to D.C. Uh, uh, now, another, another uh, place, and I can't read my own handwriting, which... Uh, I have that problem as well. <laughs> why, why are we not surprised? I think we all have that problem. <laughs> I scribbled those notes really quickly. Uh, okay, so so one of the basic paradigms that we see from Google is uh, it acts as a library. It acts as a, a librarian, a reference librarian. It helps you find other pages that have the information that you contain. Uh, uh, the other, the other, yeah, uh, that those other websites contain. Uh, but reference librarians will also answer questions. They'll also answer uh, things uh, that they may know without referring you to a specific book. And we're seeing Google move in that direction uh, uh, with knowledge base answers. And uh, at a uh, Google event earlier this year when they introduced uh, Google Now, uh, they, they talked about uh, how the knowledge base was at about 1% of what it might be in the future. Uh, Google's provided Q&A answers for a long time. They, they got patents on that back in 2003. Uh, Sergey Brin wrote a, a white paper in 1997 about how you could uh, uh, include information within a database uh, about specific books, titles, authors, publishers and use that information to find other sites on the web that contain that kind of information. 
extract that type of information, build your database up bigger, and keep on going around the web looking for more things that might contain those types of things.